Happy New Year, and welcome to the Monthly Market Report for January 2023. I'm your host, Wayne Zool, Broker Associate at REMAX First Realty 2 in Cranford, New Jersey. It's a new year, and there's new possibilities, new opportunities, and we're going to talk about some of those today as we look at where we're at right now and what's ahead with the real estate market. I want to start in and give a little bit of context and go back to a topic that we talked about last month, and that's mortgage rates. Let's first start with the reality of last year, of 2022. And that is that the 30-year fixed rate in this country doubled over the last year. We started out at 3.2% back in January a year ago, and we ended up right around 6.4% as we wrapped up the year. This has never happened before. We've never seen a year with the mortgage rate doubling, nor have we ever seen as rapid a rise in mortgage rates in the U.S. All that certainly has impacted the real estate market, but not just the market. It's impacted the psychology of buyers, sellers, and even real estate agents. Last month, we spent time breaking down the relationship between the 30-year fixed mortgage rate and the 10-year treasury yield. If you remember, we talked about it's all about the spread, everything about the spread. We went through the examples of why rates are not at 5.5%, and I'll bring that slide back up. If we go back to the year 2000 through 2021, the past 21 years, we see that the average 10-year treasury was 3.49%. The spread is 1.79%, giving us an average mortgage rate of 528 So if you take the treasury, you add 1.79%, and you get the average mortgage rate. And the treasury average over the last 20 years has been 1.79%. Then we talked about how over the last couple of years that's fluctuated, but certainly in the last year, we've seen that spread rise, where today, the 10-year treasury is at 3.69%. The spread is now at 2.79%. Giving mortgage rates now, as of this most recent posting from Freddie Mac, 6.48. Let's call that 6.5% just to make things easy. So that spread has widened over the last year. Now, if we take this as an idea, then the answer to that is, as the spread decreases, we see lower mortgage rates. And if the spread were normal today, we would see an interest rate of just under 5.5%. Now, we talked about this last month. I'm going to go over it again, because if you're a potential buyer, it's really important that you have an understanding of this. Here would be my message right now. The spread between the 10-year treasury and the 30-year fixed mortgage rate is a measure of volatility and panic. The panic is starting to subside, which is good news for long-term interest rates. We've seen a little bit of relief over the last six or seven weeks and a couple of chip-ups in the last few weeks, but certainly up and down volatility right now. But if you look at the spread the last year, we started in January of last year, and the spread's been rising as panic entered the market. If I make this a little bit lighter and then draw in an arrow, the first part of the year, we see folks getting more uncertain about the economy. Things are happening, and there's panic entering into the equation in our world economically. And then around June of last year, the Fed came out and said, we don't have this under control. We want to reset the housing market. And then we saw the panic start up again. Then we come to the end of this past year, and we start to see the panic subsiding. And the experts and economists, the Fed, they're all saying, maybe the peak of inflation is actually behind us now. So here's the bottom line. As we see volatility, we see panic starting to come down in the market. Here's a couple of perspectives about that. The first is from Lawrence Yoon. The upcoming months should see a return of buyers as mortgage rates appear to have already peaked and have been coming down since mid-November. One of the premier thinkers in the mortgage business, Dave Stevens, the former Assistant Secretary of Housing, who's held positions at the MBA, he said this, and I think it's important that we take note of it. He said, So be advised that this may be the one and only window for the next few years to get into a buyer's market. And remember, as Federal Reserve data shows, home prices only go up 
and always recover from recessions, no matter how mild or severe. Long-term homeowners should view this market right now as a unique buying opportunity. I started this off by saying Happy New Year. There's opportunity right now, and there's absolutely opportunity in the market. Now, I'm going to get there in the next few minutes of what I believe is the biggest opportunity. But for the long-term homeowner, this is an opportunity. This is an opportunity we haven't seen over the last several years. Now, I think there are things that stand in people's way and concerns, and I want to address those. One of those concerns was home prices. Now, I want to give you an update on that. First, the one thing that's true right now about the forecast for home prices is none of the experts agree. This is a look at the forecasters that I follow. They go anywhere from a depreciation of 5% to an appreciation of 5%. The important thing to remember right here is that we don't see any of these reputable forecasters calling for a free fall in prices in the housing market. One of the interesting things that's been published recently was an article in the Wall Street Journal where they looked at home price appreciation before the pandemic and after the pandemic. If you look at before the pandemic from the fall of 2017 up until the spring of 2020, there was about 12% home price appreciation for that two and a half year time span. Now, if you think about the two and a half years going into this fall, since the beginning of the pandemic, what did we see? A tremendous amount of appreciation across the country in residential real estate, 38%. So would it make sense that in some markets and in some cases we would see a little bit of a comeback from that? Absolutely it would. But again, we're not seeing a free fall in prices like some people are saying. People in the media or maybe other people on YouTube and other social media sites. It's not the case. Another fact that people think about regarding home prices is every home out there is reducing their price right now. That's simply not true. If you look at this, the share of homes having their price reduced going all the way back to 2021 at the height of the most recent information we have from Realtor.com in November, it was just over 1% of homes having a price reduction in the market. So again, not a free fall, not a situation where we're seeing every home or even a majority of homes having their prices reduced, just a slim piece of the pie. Have home values hit their bottom? This is a look right now at Case Schiller, FHFA, Black Knight, and Core Logic in their month-over-month -month home value change. If you isolate the last four months that have been published, what we see in each case is that the depreciation peaked in August. Now, I'm not here to say that we're out of the woods, but what I am here to say is that home price depreciation is not in a free fall. What I'm saying is you're not seeing it drop and continue to drop. You're going to see a little bit here and there going forward, but this is not a precipitous decline in home pricing. So let's take a look at the December existing sales report, which is the most recent one. Over 11,000 homes sell every day in the United States. The proof of that is the math on the screen. Just over 4 million homes in the existing home sales report divided by 365 is just over 11,000 homes every day. So that's not frozen by any stretch of the imagination. If you use the analogy of a shower, if the last couple of years were a shower, the water was warm. It was a great shower. It was at a point where it was not too hot. It was just warm enough where you could take an hour long shower and be totally comfortable. Well, there's no doubt that that's not coming out of the spigot right now. Maybe it's a little bit colder water, but it's not frozen. That also means that eight houses sell every minute in this country. And again, I put the math on the slide. Take that number, 11,000, divided by 24 hours, it's 467 homes every hour. Divide that by 60, it's 7.8 homes sell every single minute in the U.S. This is good news for owners and sellers, but what about buyers? There are a lot of options available. Taking advantage of adjustable rate mortgages and rate buy-downs or a seller's concession that's applied to a buy-down is very, very advantageous for those looking to buy right now. 
The Urban Land Institute says the risk of ARMS adjustable rate mortgages were substantially mitigated by the regulatory reforms put in place after the 2008 bust. Today's adjustable mortgage rate is not the risky product of 2008 or even the pre-bubble version. ARMS are no longer something to fear. In fact, they could help borrow or save money and ruse barriers to home ownership. Let's think about rate buy-downs. This comes from Real Estate News. Temporary rate buy-downs are a hot trend for mortgages as borrowers face higher costs for home loans. Some buyers are exploring alternatives to traditional mortgages in a period of rising interest rates that is expected to continue into 2023. Buy-downs are a less costly alternative to a traditional fixed mortgage rate. So whether it's a buy-down, whether it's an adjustable rate mortgage, I'm always thinking, how can I help this buyer in that market opportunity? This is why I have a great network of lenders. I think that's critically, critically important, especially for my buyers. Okay, it's a new year. There's new opportunity, and I think Looking at this, there's an insight into probably one of the most opportunistic situations in real estate. I want to break it down this way. As you start to look at information and the data that's out there, one thing becomes true. Active listings over the past two years have grown. We wrapped up 2021 with just about 450,000 active listings in the U.S. At the end of 2022, with the latest information that we have, there's just about 750,000 listings. But what do we also know? Pending listings have decreased every month since the beginning of last year. They were stable month over month from February to March, but each month since, they've trickled down, meaning pending listings is an indicator of velocity and demand in the market. So if there's less pending listings, that means less sales. So you have inventory increasing and pending listings or demand decreasing. What does that mean? It means that the market has begun to shift. Now we need to keep watching it to see where it will all wind up. As I wrap up, I want to remind you that I have free, no obligation guides available as PDF downloads for buyers, sellers, and first time buyers. The buyer and seller guides are updated quarterly so that you always have up-to-date information. I'd be happy to give you a detailed analysis of your local market, as long as you're in New Jersey. If you're out of state, I can connect you with an agent that can help you. If you'd like to get a free market analysis on your home, just reach out to me. You can reach me by email at wayne.zool at gmail.com or by phone at 908-917-4189. Likely, I'll have several questions about your home, but I can get my analysis to you within a day or two. Tune in again next month as I post the updates from the January data. Thank you for watching, and feel free to contact me with any questions.